Alec, thank you for doing this. You, you haven't said much in public since that tragic accident. Why, why speak out now? Well, I think that um, there's a criminal investigation. And that could be a while. Uh, there's all kinds of civil litigation. And I felt there were a number of misconceptions most of it from sources I really wouldn't concern myself about, but a couple that I did concern myself about where there were these authoritative statements about this is what happened. The Sheriff's Department hasn't even released a report to the DA yet. The reason I wanted to sit down with you is because I really feel like I can't wait for that process to fit to end in February, March. I mean, I'm not asking them to speed it up for my benefit, that's ridiculous. But I am saying that they're going to do what they need to do, and I wanted to come to talk to you to say that I would go to any lengths to undo what happened. I would go to any lengths to undo what happened. I think the big question, and the one you must have asked yourself a thousand times, how could this have happened? Well, we're friends, and I loved Russ. He said, I want to send you this. And I read it, and I said, I love it. I love it. Rust, a low-budget Western, tells the story of an aging outlaw on the run with his young grandson. Baldwin, the film's star, is also one of the producers. Very excited, very, very, so excited that we finally got this made because every independent film has many false starts. You know, I mean, and when it finally goes, you finally get, you feel like a plane, and when you finally get some lift under your wings, it's very, very gratifying. I am a purely creative producer. My authorities as a producer are casting and script, which are actually married to the role of being a lead actor in a film. So you're not the kind of producer who's looking at the line item of each budget? No, 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 no. My consultations or approvals were completely about casting and about the script. I don't hire anybody in the crew. I don't not even me. the cinematographer, no one? No, no, but he will apprise me of what he's doing. We're off Monday, Tuesday. Hmm. So the entire time you've been on set, have you seen these themes or Maria? And her crew, yeah, everybody. How many people are on her crew? Uh, my guess is that what I witness is three. Okay. All young women. Hannah and two other women. All right. And very often they're tasked with me, because we're not shooting every day, guns, we're not, there's no armaments every day. They dress me with my holster, my knife. We're, the, the film is set in 1888, so I'm armed with the classic weaponry of the cowboy era. Okay. And so they would make sure I was dressed properly. You know, 80, 85% of their task is to make sure I'm dressed with everything properly. The armors? The armors. Or well, the armorers, wardrobe doesn't necessarily, they sometimes trade back and forth, but wardrobe doesn't necessarily deal with my holster. Okay. And, and the knife, that's a prop. The armorer, Hannah, and her team, they dealt with me being knifed and that being lashed properly so it looks proper. Okay. And the uh, uh, holster. Okay. And so it was wardrobe as much as it was props, as much as it was armaments. Okay. Do you know Hannah's last name? No. Do you know what she looks like? Or can you describe Yeah, uh, multicolored like? hair, glasses, uh, you know, uh, not too tall. Everyone knows her pretty well because her father is a very famous armaments guy. He's a guy that did guns in movies for decades. He's very well known. Okay. She's the daughter of this famous gun guy, movie gun guy. And what about the other girls in her crew? I don't remember their names. Okay. Do you know what they look like? A blonde, thin, not too short, you know, kind of medium height, and brunette, someone on the shorter side, maybe the same height as Hannah, brunette, and uh, and also there's a there's you go back and forth between they're wearing a mask most of the time on set. They've right. been ordered to do that, but I've seen them with their mask off. Okay. First assistant director. So what are you in charge of? I'm in charge of uh, scheduling the movie, um, disseminating information to the crew about what we're doing every day, every hour. Um, uh, I I manage the set. I'm the one that you know, quiet please, pictures up, roll sound. Um, I'm also the safety coordinator. What is the safety coordinator until? Um, it's just overseeing all the departments and, and making sure that they're following you know, the right protocol. protocols for whatever stunt or 
gunfire. Okay. So you work pretty closely with the armorers then, I would assume. Okay. Um, who is on the armorer team? Uh, well, Hannah, I don't remember her last name. Okay. The, the armorer. And then uh, Sarah, I don't know her last name either. Um, it's more of the prop master, but helps Hannah. I think all, all that, that whole prop department, that, that there was a third person that came on. I don't think she was there at the beginning. I never got her name. Okay. And are you in charge of them? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I'm their supervisor, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this morning, I guess, um, let's start there. Were there. Okay. What is your full name? How do you spell your last name? G-U-T-I-E-R-R-E-Z What was that again? G-U-T-I-E-R-R-E-Z What's your place of employment? Here? Here? What's the, what's the name of the... Oh, uh, Rust. Is it like a video production or...? Yeah, it's Rust Productions, uh, yeah. LLC. What's your job there with them? I'm the armor, or at least I was. Okay, so this said you've been here for two weeks. Yes. Um, and this is your primary job is handling the armor. Yeah. Can you uh, go into detail about what you do? Um, I'm supposed to check the guns, and I load the guns, and. Uh, I hand the guns off to the actor. Okay. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Because you mentioned you've been on multiple sets. Um, since about March, but I've been handling guns my whole life, pretty much. <laughs> so you're very familiar with guns. And this is your primary function. You go to sets. different sets, and you primarily handle these guns. Yeah. Okay. To rust diffs. First AD was... First AD was terrible. Just constantly rushing things, didn't care about safety. He never uh, remember attending a safety meeting. Sills is referring to Rust Assistant Director Dave Halls. I just the arrogance that I saw in that office, and I mean with the freaking call sheet, the incompetence in that office, like that just hit me as so as absolutely unprofessional. Sills tells investigators safety bulletins were never posted on set. He explains their importance. Safety bulletins that are in reference to whatever may be on set that day, whatever can, is possibly harmful or whatnot, whatever conditions may exist, there's a safety bulletin for it. It's too hot out, safety bulletin. Animal safety bulletin, firearm, you're damn right there's a safety bulletin. Okay. On the Rust call sheets over all 12 days that they actually filmed, there was not a single reference number of safety bulletin. He then makes this alarming remark to the investigator. There's alcohol in the production office during work hours. I mean, it's, and I was informed on the previous shoot that in our start work paperwork, we sign, or there's one section that says we have to maintain sobriety the entire time we're working. Sills goes on to tell the investigator he witnessed multiple members of the crew drink on set. He then says this about the movie's armor, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. She was walking around with four guns in her waistband at one point. And it's like, that's not safe protocol at all. I heard rumors that she was taking the guns, the guns for, put aside for this shoot and using them as for target practice in her free time.